today is my distinct pleasure to introduce Marco Rodin. It's going to be a freeform workshop, and he's going to be joined on stage at some point uh, by Russ Grease. So, Marco Rodin broke onto the scene several years ago and just has been making splashes and waves ever since then. He's a true seeker of knowledge and a conduit of profound knowledge. It's pretty amazing some of the things that have come from him. Um, Literally hundreds of people around the world have now put in millions and millions of work hours and research into, ooh, into, into his work and <clears throat> in the fields of health, in the field of energy research, and the, in the fields of consciousness. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Marco Rodin. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Marco Rodin, M-A-R-K-O-R-O-D-I-N. Um, my pseudo company is Rodin Coil Labs. And my uh, voicemail and text is uh, plus one, eight, five, eight, two, five, five, one, five, two, five. I have a YouTube channel, you should subscribe to it because that's really all, the only place I put anything. Um, I have a website, it links to it, it's my name, MarcoRodin.com or RodinCoilLabs.com. The, um, if and when it works. Uh, the YouTube channel, it has an about page, you subscribe, I put videos up, sometimes I do live streaming. Um, if you can't stomach mysticism, religion, paranormal psychology, altered states, uh, the brain revolution, things that deal with the apex of consciousness, you won't like my work. Um, my, my elevator card, my lead-in is over unity, zero-point energy, free energy. I'm appealing forgive me, and I can be very, very, very abrasive, to the lowest common denominator. My word for what I'm offering is preposterous. If anybody to be offering free energy over unity, it's preposterous. No one can sell it because it's free. It's unlimited. And the, only, and the first people that are going to come out of the woodwork that's going to appeal, appeal to are people who are greedy. So it brings the worst element into play. And of course, then there's the other individuals who are threatened by it, who want to control the spigot, turn it on and off, who want to be at the riverhead and dam it up. Um, Probably the hardest thing to do in my life is to lead in as an icebreaker free energy. Because it's such a, a low-hanging fruit. It's so shooting under the target. It's, it's just, it's just, um, it's just like God sending all his prophets down um, with, uh, with what? On a Santa Claus sleigh. I mean, you're going to notice it, and you're going to recognize it. So it, it involves no diligence on your part. It involves, it's just like giving it to you on a golden platter, which is of no benefit to you, because then you're not exerting yourself in all the different ways that you have to mature and grow, spiritually, metaphysically, um, psychically, uh, ethically, morally. Free energy is not a solution. If you are not polished and refined enough to deal with it appropriately, that's the problem. The problem isn't the free energy. Many people have preceded me and come before me who knew these secrets. Usually their discoveries went to the grave with them because they wanted to have a nest egg when they died. They felt that their survival 
must be guaranteed their livelihood. And so when they died, all their accomplishments were lost. And that's why right now the world's, that's why the Australian Great Barrier Reef is over 90% completely bleached right now and guaranteed to die. Because the whole planet is in topsy-turvy, one way, shape, or another. Why? I'm not an expert, and I don't want to touch those issues. So I'm not trying to do anything that's going to slow down your spiritual, personal growth. In fact, I want to make it as hard for you as I can. I'm a firm believer that you, no pain, no gain. I'm not trying to give you easy street on anything. Mm -hmm. Noted? Okay. Um, the work that I want, I had three or four things I cared about to present, and I'm not going to start with that because the video's ready. But I'm going to tell you if that, and I probably won't even cover, I'll be lucky if I do any of them. One was going to do a hologram from micro to macro. Why the doubling circuit? A few of you know what I'm talking about. One, two, four, eight, seven, five. No one's ever seen how it um, is a 3D hologram. It vindicates my work because it, I want to say my talk, my presentation tonight is, you know, I could have said, you know, this is for, written for the one I love. It's for the Netherlands. Because the Weatherlands has a wind that turns all those windmills. Are they called windmills? What are they called in, in your language? Hmm? Molens. molens. They're molens. Molen. And they have the wind. So I have found a wind. I have found a wind of eternity, a fountainhead, a spray, an unresistible above the known elements, emanation that only occurs in the center of the magnetic field. And when the magnetic field is going this way, the wind is going this way. And the wind's the source. It's the control. The people from the Netherlands are considered magnificent engineers, at least in the past. And my goal is to get this work there first into greenhouses because they have their major product is flowers and fruits and vegetables that are it's very cold there i want to see my work used for peace and that's where i want to see it used first uh, i can light up a greenhouse it can produce um, unlimited light it needs no solar no wind no turbine no batteries no nothing the video I'm about to put in is a quick synopsis of that. I haven't seen it myself either, for that matter, what you're about to see. Then we're going to do a live feed, a live stream. We're going to do it with a man that's very competent. He can um, build a robot and replace himself with the robot in a blink of an eye. That's Russ, who spoke two presentations earlier. And Russ is going to be our um, Doubting Thomas. He's going to reverse engineer, dissect, rip and tear apart, and put back together again the rodent coil over unity energy amplifier and verify for himself, does it produce over unity and report to everybody. I have complete trust and confidence in Russ. Um, The other things I would have done is waves of nine. It doesn't really mean anything to you what I'm saying. It's an illustration. It would have shown how I'm tapping to this energy. There's been a lot of criticism in the last week of me saying I'm doing Sudoku or I'm doing Photoshop. I got to live with it. Um, that with the waves of nine, I'm showing Newton's cradle. You take one ball. One ball comes out the other end. It passes the vibration through the other four balls. There's six balls total. Mark Twain called that communicated agitation. 
If you take two balls, two will come out at the other end. Classically, that's called Newton's cradle. I found a way to do that with numbers. That's never been done before. But the profound thing is, is that I found that these numbers were passing energy. I call it a numerical interferometry diffraction grading. It's considered impossible. I also have my peer review from Microsoft. I would like, if there's time, they've given me a long time. They've given me a double session, two and a half hours. I would actually like to read a single letter written from the director of advanced operating systems and his resume who devoted his life to my work. If I had the funds, I would interview all the scientists, corporate engineers, professors who have devoted their lives to this discovery. It would take a year plus because they've made such profound, huge discoveries and applications from, from biology to space power propulsion to computer science. That's the strength of this discovery. It's done, it's finished, it's ready to go out the gate. What do I do? <laughs> well, I gotta go. <laughs> um, if we covered all those things, there was one other thing, if I could do it too, is my ex-wife, mother of my twin daughters, Venus and Cloud, Heidi, wrote my first website, and only website. It's not up anymore. Uh, Jeff Rintz, the radio host, has it on his site. It's Rodin Aerodynamics with three S's. It's only the first part. The other part that goes into Enneagram, it's important, but it's the, the first part. I probably should sign out. No, no, don't mute it. Only sign me out of Skype on this phone here, please. But leave it on the iPad. You don't want to take it off the iPad because the iPad's what we're going to put on the screen. Um, we haven't done a sound test. If we have any problems, it's going to be audio. We'll have to live with it. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, Heidi's write-up explaining the Taurus and how it works is superb. It's only a couple of pages. I would actually like to read that through. It may not happen if it does or doesn't, but it really edifies and clear, clearly explains how this works. Okay, um, Mike, what I bring to the table is, is that I've been able to take the binary code and computers and everything. I found the pathway that electricity flows in naturally. You don't have to force it. I get rid of resistance, reluctance, I'm able to make electricity super efficient. I actually get the temperature going down. I cool it with its own magnetic field. The coils you're seeing with copper are a toy. They're just a joke. There's so many other ways to make it. Um, solid state, um, screen printed, not the type of screen printing you're thinking of, but very simple ways. The cost for this is nothing. The, Tulip is nothing. The materials are on any shelf. They're not exotic. That's why this is significant. It doesn't take liquid ni nitrogen and cryogenics and, and, and a capitalization. It's done. The models you're going to be seeing cost a quarter of a million dollars in 2015 to produce. I didn't receive any of that money specifically. It went to overhead expenses, office people, testing equipment. Um, my goal was to get a toehold, tow to get established with the university, have students, have a budget, because I need to delegate the work. I can't do any more work that I'm doing. And I'm, I'm drowning. I'm overdosed in work. And so I need a good staff, and I like, and I want to do a curriculum in the university. And the University of Texas at Austin is one of the um, most um, open-minded there is, and that's why I like it. And it's still high tech. And that's why I'm here in Austin. Um, 
see if I've covered anything before we begin. Uh, there's last point, probably the most important point. The engineer that you're about to hear from, I'm going to call him 007. He, um, he's giving away his know-how, his skill set, and he's doing it up front. He's not, in other words, this, this is his nest egg that he's giving to you. This is an illustrious moment. This is a profound big deal in all of our lives, okay? Because he's sacrificing himself, he's sharing the magic sauce. His skill, his know-how, the secret ingredients. I'm going to be asking questions. If I think something's being glided over, that's critical. The matrix, the lattice, is critical. I predicted if this weaving, this geometry, was made, this, this, um, this blueprint, the schematic, that from micro to macro, it didn't matter what the materials were, you'd get the same results over unity. He, if you had a, a million scientists, they would not replicate what he's done. He had just the right combination of abstract thinking, surrealistic personality, and, and engineering Geronimo to make it work. And that's why I'm here, and that's why it's, it needs to be properly explained. Because it defies and goes a totally counter-directional to what any pro professionally trained electrical engineer is going to do. They would follow convention, what they're taught in the textbooks, what they learned in school, and this won't work. Okay, so let's start with this video, and I apologize in advance. As if you don't think this is a rough presentation, then um, you can be a member of my board. <laughs> so here goes. Hello. Hey, Russ. Nice to meet you. Nice How's it going? It's going well. Nice to meet you too. Oh. <laughs> I heard that you were with John Hutchinson. I visited John Hutchinson. I did. That was last April. That was an interesting trip. Yeah, nice work on the, the fuel cells. Uh, well, I didn't get it, but hope one day we will get it. Um, absolutely. The way that he builds his cells with all those components. Um, it should be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but that's what it is. It's a, lot, it's a lot more work than some people realize, but one day at a time, as I say. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I have experiment with some of, the, some of those diets um, that is using, actually LEDs, if you put it uh, out in the sun, um, they, they can draw uh, some power. Well, it's well known that semiconductors um, and this technology uh, that he's using um, is pretty well known. I, I try it myself, um, and I, I can, you know, certify that uh, there's something in there. Um, but yeah, it has to be uh, furthermore investigated than it is right now. But other than that, is is really interesting, really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I'm interested in what you've got on your screen. Go for it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, nothing special, I believe, um, really. Um, I, I, I'm treating this coil as, um, you know, as a wind turbine or as a solar panel array or whatever. Um, uh, seriously, I, I, I get lucky because I, I was working with wind turbines uh, a lot, and um, I'm sure that you you have done it, I don't know, um, before. If so, uh, you should know that um, like a one kilowatt or two kilowatt wind turbine, um, three phase, out of the three phase motor or an alternator, um, there is a lot um, a lot of power coming out of that, uh, especially, you know, 600, uh, 700, 800 volts AC. 
and uh, it's pretty hard to find a controller uh, that can handle, uh, you know, those variables uh, from zero to, let's say, 1,000. And AC, um, and I, I, I was looking in a, in this wind turbines, um, you know, different uh, windings and different shapes of um, of magnets. Um, and one thing that you know strikes me was that I couldn't find you know any step down controller uh, or DC to DC when when you rectify it, of course. Um, that could handle uh, those kind of, you know, powers. Well, at least for small winds, um, I've tried, a, you know, a bunch of, um, I'm sure that you know, uh, the Midnight Solar, uh, the controllers. Uh, let me see if I can get you out of, I have my camera here sticking on this, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Kind of, um, what do you call it? It's like a Velcro, Velcro thing. And I'm nice. sure that you that you you guys have seen this kind of controllers in the past. There are solar controllers, yeah, the MPPT controllers. Yeah. Uh, what they do it's that they, they step down. Um, Turn. Like this Turn one, Russ's it's, mic it's up a little common. bit for me, please. They. they you can introduce it, uh, introduce 150 uh, volts DC when rectified. And he, uh, what it does, it steps down to your battery voltage. Uh, the battery. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. That's being charged. Yeah, the solar, yeah. the solar, yeah. or the uh, solar charger is charging that battery and controlling it, maintaining it, etc. Yeah, yeah, it can handle the 30 amps. So I was switching. Um, it, I'm sure that you, uh, I have seen you uh, in many videos talking with Daniel, um, and um, you know that these things exhibit a lot of uh, high voltage, you know, all of, you know, Tesla, Tesla technology, they, you know, it's huge, it's huge high voltage, and I was really, 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 um, you know, um, curious that the market was not, um, Delivering like if you want to buy a 3,000 volts, a 3,000 volts AC or DC, uh, let's say uh, DC step down to a 12 volt to 24 volt. There's not a lot of them, and uh, I've burned like six to ten of these controllers. You know, uh, of course, when you you have to. What I've done here is I. As you know, I have rectified the coil. I smoothed it into uh, these caps, and then I um, have uh, built this uh, step-down control that can handle like a two two thousand five hundred um, volts DC to to twenty-four. Okay. It's what it does. Um, hey, double oh seven. Can we well, uh, can we start from the uh from the very beginning of the of the incoming and work our way to the output? Oh, yeah. No problems. Let's yeah, start, of course. Well, you, well you, should, you, you know this setup. Um, but it's um, a frequency generator, of course. Okay. It generates a frequency to the amplifier. Um, I, this is um, an acoustic, a bass amplifier. So it's coming out of the... The amplifier is going to um, try, here. Try moving, try moving the camera a little slower because it's more uh, clear when it's when it's more steady that way. Oh, more steady this way. Okay, there okay, no problem. Thank you. So, um, uh, did you follow? Um, so it's coming out here, out of the um, a amplifier. A single phase. And, yeah, single phase. A single phase to you can see it there it's AC in. Let me throw out this what, light a little what, bit. Off. What voltage is the amplifier putting out? Is that a high voltage amplifier? No, it's a bass. Okay. Uh, you know, a bass um, amplifier? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I use it to bass because I have seen, um, well, back then I was seeing them. The, um, I think it was Greg. 
I don't know if it was Greg Rowland. Greg, Greg Rowland. He, he was using a BH, um, this one, a okay. B200H um, okay. amplifier. Got it. Uh, back then, and I was able to see it on the YouTube channel. And uh, okay. So, but they're made on the U.S., so I, I have to, you know, step it down from these AC uh, to AC converter. What it does, it steps up. Right. From uh, 110 to um, 220. And, and yeah, um, so, and this is going to, well, let me get this out of the way. This is the... Um, the from the it's number one it's the yellow one uh, it's hooked up to the input here from positive to 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 the negative of the single phase and it's clamped over here also um, with this clamp meter um, I don't know if you can see it so pretty standard yeah. Clamp. yeah. Just to cross, yeah, I, I see to cross uh, what is the what is the the, the amperage uh, both analog. I got to hear the analogs also. Yeah. Good. Well, okay. Yeah. This one goes to 60 uh, volts. Um, this is the amp meter that goes to a 1.5. It's to much of a light here. Let me control it. Let me see, see if I can get you guys. Yeah, that looks more. better. That looks better. Yeah. So um, as you know, this this coil is powered. Uh, the input. Uh, it's also the output, right? <laughs> uh, so there's just yeah, one. There's one. There is no. There, there is no induction on this coil, really. Uh, it's just one single coil all the way around, or is there many circuits there? There's many. Uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. I was asking if there was a single coil configuration, one loop, or is it many coils, and some of them are shorted, and some of them are open? Or can you just explain the coil a little bit better? I know the math, but um, just explain it how you've done it, electrically engineering circumstances. Yeah, I can go through that. So he has an L1 and L2. He has um, on L1 has the same uh, number of conductors that on, on L on L2 L1 and L2, so it's 12 plus 12. Um, the wiring uh, between um, it's it's different than Daniel's really. Um, it does not uh, con he connects himself himself. Um, uh, on L1, um, I have six conductors, short circuit, uh, and I'm using the other six on series. And that's, that, that's in the same single coil on L1? Yeah, on L1. So the same is, is, is on L2. So there are, you know, twins. There are really twins. Um, yeah, so... so, so but the, but I, I, I can, you know... After this, I don't know if you guys have. That's very after, critical. After that, I can send you the I can send you the wiring pattern. Okay, yeah, it's very really easy. Uh, yeah. Well, it's easy when you when you it's, have the money to do it. Let me, let me ask <laughs> you. Let, let me ask you this question. You've got L1. Let's talk about just one coil. You've got L1. You've got six of those conductors in that single bundle shorted out, and the other six are actually connected to the circuit. Yeah. Okay. Correct. All right. All right. Keep going. So I've got, uh, so to speak, I've got uh, copper core in each one of them, right? It's, I'm sorry, say that again? I, I've got a, uh, what it is, is I have got a copper core oh, in see? each, right? Yeah, yeah. Because they're shorted. Right, right. <coughs> right, I understand. Copper core. Yeah. Yeah, six, six of those 12 pairs are the, co uh, the, the copper core in this, in, in what you're explaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's correct. Okay. And then, um, so then it's pretty much standard, as Daniel did. Um, besides the, you know, the, the, the way of, uh, that it's wanted, it, it, it does not as, uh, you know, cross 
uh, whining parents. It's, it's just one, one whining. Yeah. It's clockwise. And, and do you have uh, 12 points there? Six points there? 12 points there, because I know Daniel uses 11, which is not technically correct. Is, is, I, is there 12 uh, plastic? No, 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 this is, a, this is 11. Okay, all right, all right, okay. Back then, when, when I was working, uh, well, back then when I was not considering into the question, because I understand, you know, people that understand a lot more sometimes don't answer silly questions uh, but then, uh, but on the beginning uh, Daniel was using 12 you remember he was using what 12, 12 frames right exactly and in order to make this a complete circuit you've got to use the 11 or else you've got to yeah. do multiple coils or some other configuration so I understand that yeah yeah but back then I was arguing, arguing with them well Really, it's not that important, but if you want a, the perfect geometry, it's 11. Back when I was working well with a guy, a Russian guy, and he was really into it, and he was, we were talking, and he was saying to me, hey, this is wrong, um, let's try 11. Uh, just, just to try, if the geometry can, comes, you know, really, um, better than the, the, because of the 12 what happens is that the wiring uh, you reach to a point that it was not perfect yeah you gotta you gotta jump to the next circuit and stuff to make it work but this is yeah. just a, a single long bundle to make a single l1 or l2 i'm with you um yeah yeah so keep so keep going down the circuit for now and then we can always ask more details i think i'm clear on the coil so you've got you got the okay. you got the signal generator going to the amplifier, the amplifier going yeah. directly to L1, and then L2 is connected to what? That's that, that is correct. Okay. So, uh, I, I just I don't know if you've seen it before, but I have it here also. Um, yeah. Around yeah. the the coil, I have a an AC probe. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's a loop. Right. Let me show you. Show you. Uh, uh, is that just well, is that just going to your handheld uh, visual loop there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is where it's hooked up to. Yeah. Got it. So um, then I've got here, of course, the other um, a meter that goes into the input. Uh, gotta go here. Wait a second. Let me just go here. Let's look up this. This one, let's see if I can get you a good visual. All right, let me get this here. This is the output on the capacitor. Uh, what, what, uh, is that, a, is that a capacitor for tuning purposes or why is that there? Yeah, it's for tuning, yeah. To, you got you got to have that uh, LC circuit going according to your yeah. frequency, right? Okay. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, attack circuit. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, you got to you got to get that door going. So let me get the camera on again. Here we go. Okay. So then we got the capacitor uh, over here, and then now it's. There is no load, right? Or it is not working. Yeah. The capacitor. And then I here have from the capacitor going to full wave switch rectifier here. Okay. And then it's going to this um, capacitors. I'm going to show you the good visual on this. They are um, 450 volts uh, to 220. Better one. Well, uh, 220 UF mic microfarads, uh, but they are all in parallel, so it's 220 times eight. Right. Right. And what? What? So, the, what? Before you go on, what's the capacitance uh, and the voltage of the other small capacitor you have? Oh, uh, this the one is 2,000 volts DC, uh, 2,000 volts at. Point eighteen UF. All right, got it. 
finally to New York, yeah. He works with, um, with us on this one. Let me get you the capacitor here. Wait just a second. Where is it? Oh. He worked also with this one. This, is, this one is for motors. Okay, yeah. Start, I'm sure you know this one. Yeah, just starting cab or running cab, one of the two. Yeah. So this one, well, what, yeah, what's, this one works really better. What size is that one? It's hard to read on the screen. Uh, this side, this one is 450 um, to 500 Diaz, uh, um, a 2.5 UF. Okay, cool. All right, yeah, run us through the rest of the circuit. Okay, so we're going from the capacitors here, right, and going to the I voltage here, positive and negative, now we have DC. This is, of course, you know that the capacitors uh, is just as well as the signal. Um, so, can you see it? Yeah. It's uh, you're just using them to smooth out the voltage, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And then, that's your... and then comes out of um, let me get you this wire down here. So, um, this is from the capacitors to the I voltage here, um, of uh, the transmission, the DC DC converter step down, you know. Uh, four volts. This one steps out to the 24 volts, and this it accepts. Um, okay, this is from the controller, the wind controller, right? Yeah, I see it. So from positive and negative, from the uh, the output of the DC converter is going to uh, this 150 volts DC. Uh, max input, uh, and then I've got here uh, both up to uh, oh, should I say from from the the controller to the battery, right to a 12 volt battery. Got it. Yeah. So this is a 12 volt, 45 amp hours. Okay. Okay. Hope you can see. What that. What was okay. the uh... Well, tell me again what the DC DC converter number was. You said it earlier, but I I don't remember. Well, the DC DC converter stepped down. Um, What's the specifications? I mean, the specifications is going so. Um, no, I mean I mean like the part number on the box. Well, they're on the box. <laughs> there is no part number. Okay. I built it with uh, I built it with a uh, couple of German guys. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, they, they are from from a wind turbine um, a wind turbine um, a company. Uh, they have uh, they have really nice skills uh, and yeah. What it is is it, 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 you can book up uh, to two thousand five hundred. DC input. That's that's your uh, max. Yeah. Okay. On this on this um, yeah on this DC DC controller okay. and steps down to 24. Yeah. Fair enough. What the? I have a quick question before you go on. Right there, right next to the small white capacitor, are those uh, are those little inductors on there or what are those? Are those just for the meters? Small capacitors. Okay. And what, what, what small capacitor? Oh, uh, I can't tell what they are. They might just be wire junctions, but they're right next to the uh, wire. Uh, wire junctions. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, wire junctions. Right. It's just hard. It's hard to see. I just wanted to make sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> I use a lot of them, as you can see. Yeah, they're easy. They're easy to use. Okay, so. I use a lot of them. Yeah. It, it just makes it easy uh, to, you know, to make connections. You know. Take apart, take apart, right. whatever. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, it's good. well, go ahead and fire it up or whatever you want to do. It looks good. I think. I think. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, we've got the basics down. At least I do. So we 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 are using um um one point three two six kilohertz. 
I'm yeah, sorry, say that again? That will fire it up. What, what was the frequency? Couldn't hear it. So at 1.3. 1.3 kilohertz, okay. Six. All right. Yeah, so this is the on and off button. If I got might, it. If you had a thousand years, Russ, would you have guessed to take six of the wires and short them oh, and to wind it do that? It's powered. Probably that, not. That wasn't in my original thought. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's but why it's it makes so sense. unique. It does make sense, though. Watch what it does. Uh, do you, are you guys asking yeah. any questions? No, we're just talking back and forth. Continue. Okay. Let's do it. I'm musing with Russ. Okay. <laughs> so, um, as you can see here, now we've got... Uh, wait a second. What is going on? Let me power this a little bit up. There we go. Yeah. There we go. It's a little bit up. I'm trying to, you know, have a really uh, steady uh, power here. So I powered it up. You can see it's on. Yeah. I can see it. Side, we've got 46 um, volts. Uh, just to let you know that, well, let, let me turn it off again for you to see this. Can you see the hemp? Yeah, I can see that. Can you see the numbers? Yeah, 2156, and I believe that's AC amps. 22 amps. It's, that's 2,000. Oh, 2,170 amps. That's correct. I'm going to bring it down again. I'm going to turn it off. So it's off, as you can see. We Zero amps, point one amps. And just to, just to clarify for people who may not understand, that's that measurement there is the loop going around the entire, all of the conductors in from looping through the inside of the torus right there. Yeah, okay. I mean, I understand. I'm just pointing it out for other people who may not understand where you're taking that measurement. Okay. Uh, so let me go. Let me see. If I can. Uh, my goodness. Yeah, let me get... Okay, it's this piece of equipment here. All right, it's hooked up to there. So it's coming out of this, it's going to this, because it's very long and I cut it short here with a, you know, some kind of good and it's going there. So I'll, I'll fire it again. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. So it's fired. Right? Yeah, we can let's, see it. Let's see the analogs. You might have to dim your lighting some more. It's pretty uh, okay. white. Pretty light. Okay, let me... Yeah. So can you read it? Yeah, it's... Uh, hold it steady. Maybe back it off just a tiny bit. It's about point... Uh, oh, not quite an amp. Yeah, right about an amp. To make sure that you guys were seeing that and crisscrossing this one this analog it's right about there the 50 something well about 55 or we so can, we can see that there. yeah 46, 46 yeah. Okay. right and this is the over here let me get the light on okay this is the end side right Right, we can right. see it. Okay. Um, so, on the oscilloscope, this is yellow. The probe is yellow. That is on the input, and we're going to cross it here with number one there on yellow. It's 45.8, right about, yeah. The same, right? Yeah. This one says 46. Yeah, looking at the voltage, yeah. Now, yeah, let me go just... Your amp... The, 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 there's also an amperage, amperage uh, measurement on your oscilloscope there, but that's not... That's, yeah, there is. I'm going to take, take them out. Yeah, you, because the way you've yeah. got it connected, it's just voltage measurement here. Yeah, okay. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, I just want to clarify for everyone else, too. Yeah. So... This is um, the waveform. This is square wave, of course. That's the incoming, right? Yeah, up 46, right over there. So I uh, will, 
now um, go for the amp. The amp. It shows on poop, right there. Yeah, which, uh, yeah, point it out. I want to make sure I'm reading the right spot. Okay. So this is blue. Yeah. And it says 800. 40. Well, mean eight, eight, will be uh, 850. Yeah. Right. I can see it on on the on the same channel there. Yeah. Okay. It is. All right. So it, it's right about, and you can you know cross it with this one. And yeah. You might turn your lighting down a little bit more. Oh uh, yeah, I lost control of you know because my screen goes off. Okay. I'm very poor at you know computers that I'm doing this you know single-handed with the camera on the other end. Yeah, <laughs> really the, the, hard. what you're seeing right now, everybody, is not an easy task. This is this is this is the normal garage lab view. Uh, yeah. tour that you get when somebody's doing something. <laughs> You're doing too much. Get a tripod. It's very, very handy. Or a so, box. Um, we might as well go here for the output now. And the output, of course, it's now good. Okay. Can you see it? Not really. It's still a little okay. white. Okay. Contrast is too high. Uh, yeah. Let me. There you good? go. There you go. There we go. So it's, it's roughly the same as the input. Yeah, roughly the same. Yeah, there is some losses. Um, you know, uh, uh, sometimes there is a gain. <laughs> yeah, OK. But, but, but it, of course, this, this was expected um, because uh, there is no induction on this. It's just the same wire uh, you're out. It's the, s the same wire as yeah, you a, input. It's a 1-1 one, one transformer pass-through kind of. Yeah, and this is the output in volts. Yeah, uh, yeah, can't quite see it. Okay, let me. There you go. Yeah, hold it there and hold it steady. Okay, so we got about 250 volts approximately. Yeah, a little bit less than that, yeah. I believe. Just a little. Uh, and uh, we will go here for this one. 215. Rather than 15, right. Now, uh, what I want to do is probably, um, you know, uh, you want me to put the, the leads from the voltage in there? Uh, uh, on, this one? Yeah, on your scope, you mean? Oh. You Or where at? Where you want to put it? Oh, shit. This went down. Adjust your headset for me, please, if you would. Yeah. You're a little bit, your headset's not that clear. Can you make it a little bit more clear for me, 007? Wait a second, this went off. Everybody, everything's turned off. Wait a second. My gotta, goodness. You gotta love those power strips. They always trip the darn breakers right when you're ready for it. Uh, wait a second. It always happened. It always happened. Th this is this is what I consider live open science. This is this is it right here. You're viewing what I do sometimes on a daily basis. Except this is more fun because you're watching, like right Wait. in front of me instead of on the internet. I can solve this. But like literally, people will talk back and forth like this with the live open science mentality. You guys, instead of sitting in front of me. Can be behind the I, computer chatting. So. I tripped some breakers. Wait a second. I'll be back. <laughs> I'm going to the secret breaker house. <laughs> this it, was expected also. It happens okay. to the Give best of us. Do 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 do. Okay, Russ. I'm listening. You understand that the end result is that once it's daisy chained, we're talking about running like a five ton air conditioner. We're talking about five kilowatts, 10 kilowatts, 15 kilowatts. It's copper wire. It should be scalable. So and I'm, I'm, I'm going to agree with you right now. But once I again, 
Your headset's a little bit muffled, though. Validation. Tell him to play with his headset. Uh, again, the Chris Breaker out to the, the house with strips. Marco's saying your headset's a little muffled. Oh, and now? That's better. Now it's better. That's much better. Uh, I gotta replace the fuse from this. <laughs> I completely understand. Wait, I've got to replace a fuse, a fuse from the amplifier. Uh, this was expensive when it got short circuit or whatever tripped. Uh, this has a protection on the back. Let me see if I can show you off of that. Yeah, always add protections into your stuff if you can, because replacing thousands of dollars yeah. worth of equipment is not very pleasant. Let me see if pleasant. I got here some other... Uh, um, yeah, so far it's looking good. So uh, my personal goal is to verify this for myself with my own my own hands because that's that's verification for me personally. This is a good. How are you? I got the fuse. Fantastic. <laughs> I was expecting this. <laughs> It's a two amp fuse out of the, you know, amplifier. Fire. Here we go. So, bear with me. Don't go away. You want to charge that? There we go. In the back. Live open science, my friends. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful <laughs> thing when you're working. Well, on it's it. always open. Well, it's. Uh, Turn the power supply off and the amplifier off. You want to do real science, you got to be a patient person. You're doing well. Yeah, but whatever. I'm going to do it. Okay. 007, you see the logo everyone see on his computer up at the top off the screen? It's pull your computer. Well, he can't. Sorry? E explain how the math of the funny, which I call the superliminal pic pictogram, or the mathematical fingerprint of God, that funny VW symbol. While you're doing this, explain how there's, what does my math, vortex-based mathematics, have to do with this? Yeah, just go, the, you got an emblem on your screen there, the vortex uh, uh, map, and uh, if you can just go through it Try to connect the electrical thinking that you have to the mathematical thinking that Marco has. We want to, we want to well, understand where you're at on there, I think. Um, I, uh, sorry, guys. I was here, you know, concentrated on this. Just did not make you don't, know, any mistakes. Don't, don't mess with people playing with electricity. It's a bad well, idea. What was the question? Um, the, didn't get it. That's okay. The, uh, the emblem there right on your screen on your laptop, it's, uh, it's Marco's uh, hieroglyph with the uh, moving motion. Can you, can you tie the mathematics to the electrical properties of, of what we're seeing? Like, tie those two things together for us. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Basically, as I see it, it's... Um, this wiring parent, parent, what it does is it creates um, the best that, that I can you know, explain it, an electric venturi. Um, so if you uh, pulsate any coil or any you know, circuit, besides that, it's, a close, it's an enclosed system, right? Right. Um, which uh, Eric Dollard uh, refers it to, you know, there's something uh, that doesn't add up on a toroidal field, um, either uh, because it's, you know, uh, a close, enclosed uh, system. In the way that I see it is that uh, it draws or pushes, creates a pressure field. Uh, in this case, clockwise. Uh, why did I choose clockwise? Clockwise is constructive, right? Uh, you, as a, right, right, yeah. I, yeah. I can agree with that. It, it is a constructive situation. If you go uh, anti-clockwise, it's uh, destructive. You can see it on... Um, 
uh, Russell work, m many, many others of the past uh, as, as depicted this as, um, as visualize or experience um, these um, fields. So the way that I see it, it, it's drawing energy or it's drawing the, the field towards the center and uh, accelerating uh, things towards the center of the coil, the center of the torus. It comes back from the other side and is reintroduced again uh, back into the back into the to the to the system. Um, so it kind of conserves um, it conserves the energy um, and gives the opportunity uh, to 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 the, to for you to have uh, in this enclosed system um, a conservation of the energy. Yeah, it's almost so, like it's almost like this is a this is a source where you're drawing in you know the the ambience around you or something like that where you're. Where you're yeah. you're creating you're creating the space where the extra energy that's around us every day that we don't know about can be used in something. Yeah, that's correct. So, so can you tie it to the actual mathematics for us, or is that about the best? Like as far as maybe the if you look at the uh, the hieroglyph on your computer and just sort of. Well, I just like that you know um, that book. It's a, the magnetic uh, magnetic prince of life. I'm sure you know you have seen it or have heard about it. What is that in that book? It says that uh, and confirms what Marco uh, has always uh, t told us: is that okay? Um, you've got this uh, this this patterns, this numbers, this this number. Uh, number sequence that you can um, mimic nature it's what it is um, right so we are mimicking uh, nature's uh, great pattern so so you've had some of this sorry about sorry about my english but oh, you're, i'm not no, really it's great. used to uh, it's probably better than mine i'm still learning english 101 that's why i'm like stuttering half the time <laughs> so um I guess you, right now the demonstration you've got set up, you know, you're charging a battery through a, through a step yeah, down. Let, and let, let's let's fire it a bit up again okay. and hope that everything is okay right now. Yeah, check it. So it's fired up, um, and I would like you to show you this. Let me see this. Let me get you to this. Yeah. Can you see it? If you hold it really steady, I think we could. Yeah, 10.6 amps, 14.5 volt. Uh, I can't quite read the numbers on the far right. 150 watts, I see there, correct? 150 watts. So okay. that's dependent on your load, right? Right. You have that's your, the uh, So this is frequency dependent and load dependent. But now you can see that the DC DC converter is on. Yes. Everything is on again. So we we've got at the input at the output side, which is the input at um, the rectifier. Uh, going uh, rectified to the DC DC converter that's stepping down I'm gonna put you on the input side okay okay do you see there on the input side it's stepping down from 200 to um, 20 volts I see the input right. yeah at about the same and voltage I can go through this oh that's the battery okay Okay, that's the battery and that's the input. Now I can go to the other part of the screen because he has many, you know, screens, uh, many displays. Now you can hear the fan turns on, right? I couldn't hear it, but I believe you. Uh, let me go just here with the microphone. Can you hear it? The fan on the DC DC converter is turned on. Yeah, it's I think I can barely hear it. An yeah. high voltage, right? 250 at 
almost an amp. Yeah, and show. Why don't you show us all the meters again, real quick? The the ones you've got there. Okay. Just the okay. input, the input output. There you go. So that's forty six point nine. Yep, AC incoming. AC incoming. At the amperage, uh, of the amp. Let me see. Uh, I lost the visual of the, co the computer sometimes. So that's one amp, almost. Which we can crisscross it with the blue one here on the oscilloscope. Yeah. Right? Right. And then we are going for the output side. Yeah, so the input there is probably a little over 36 watts, if I did yeah. my math right. But, okay, but this, this also is consuming, this frequency generator is consuming 20 watts. Okay. Of course, but you, we can go for a smaller circuit that consumes a absolutely, watt. Abs watt, absolutely, one milliwatt. Right, absolutely. Uh, no, yeah. it's just a signal. Uh, but I rather use this one because he has a bunch of, um, you know, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, it's this, also. It's, he has a bunch of situations that you can change. Yeah. So um, go, go to go square, to the go to the output. Yeah, go to the output real quick. We'll do that quick calculation while we. Well, I could just do it on the fly. Go back to the meters, though. Use your meters. Okay. So it's 215. Got it. Okay. It's at the same amperage. Yeah, so I'm that's about... I'm going to turn off the blue one. So it's about 172 watts out. So, And, of course, you got to calculate some of the amplifier stuff in there. But as a basic measurement, that's still a really big amplification. Yeah, so you, now you see that the blue, uh, that uh, purple is on, and you can see there the RMS mean, it's 800. Is, and that, is that on the same? Is that on the same scale? Amps. That's not on the same scale as the incoming, is it? What's the? Uh, I can't see the cursors. What is the uh, voltage set to on your input? Oh, uh, I can go with the probe there. Okay, let me go there. Is it a times 10 probe, or what is it? What? Uh, so your input voltage is lower than your output, and on your oscilloscope, I'm trying to figure out the scale on the uh, actual grid on your oscilloscope. What's, what's it set to? Uh, oh, let me, let, I'll go through that. Okay. okay. The scale is, so one division, it's 50 volts. That's the incoming, right? Yeah, incoming. Okay, and what's the output uh, there? Uh, I'm going for the output now. I'm going to put the probe in there. Okay. Are you having fun? I have to use the I other hand. Fun. Sorry. <laughs> I don't. I've done it before. It's it's kind of shock. <laughs> yeah. Cause, yeah. Well, don't mess up your. I don't want to get shocked. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a high voltage in here. We know these things could and will shock you sooner than later. Sometimes it's good to have a little zap and get a little fresh memory of what yeah. what you should be very careful of. Yeah. As long as you're still breathing. Oh. Uh, so, but this That's scary. This oscilloscope only can handle 300 volts. Yeah, the, we can see it though. That's is it? And yeah. your you got is your probe still set at the same times one or ten or whatever it was at, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me auto set it. You got the current probe switch too, or just the? Uh... I'm gonna switch now, though. So you could see now that it's 200 and. Yeah, 12 eight. volt. Yeah, eight, eight. volt. Yeah. Uh, Kind of going for auto set here. It doesn't like this frequency at all. Yeah, look at the outcoming wave. Look at what it's doing. It's pretty yeah different. You know, it's replicating the wave in there. Right. It's it's it's, it's, it's like you're getting well according to well, the scope. It's interference some of some kind. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some Weird strange happens stuff happen in, in my experiments too. Uh, okay, let me get this uh, just the voltage. All right, here we go. So, 
here we go. So max, it will go to 213, which is really coincidence with the the thing, uh, the, the the fluke meter, which is now off. And yeah. So if you switch this thing over to the light bulbs you've got sitting there, is that easy to do? That. If you switch it over to the light bulb load, the uh, inductive load, is that an easy thing to do? It is. Do you have to return, retune the entire output when you do that? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it works at right about. No, it's just checking all these wires out. Okay. Um, and do you want me to go ahead and do that? Yes, please. Okay, no problems. <laughs> I'll do that. In, in the meantime, I'll sing songs. You all ready? <laughs> Real nice. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, this is this is. Look at the output waveform, though. That's very interesting. The way it's like it's literally how, yeah. how many how many? Like it's hard to see, but it looks like at least three individual sine waves going on. I right there. It's crazy. I it's crazy. I don't get it. I never seen this before. Really. It's, it's look, <laughs> well, let me turn it off <laughs> because I don't want to get, you know, <laughs> again, heavily shocked. So, I'll turn the amplifier off. Where is, here we go. Uh, 007. I might, Can you hear me? Well, uh, Can you hear me? Or, yeah. Um, so am I um, being too boisterous if I say that uh, once looped and the final product, it can run an industry, it can run um, commercialization, it can run a hotel, it can run a, a manufacturing plant, it can run a home, it can run a boat, it can run an underground city? Am I pushing the margin? Can it go into outer space and can you do a... A uh, vegetable garden on Mars with this, and grow and create oxygen and water and an atmosphere with this. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> you can do as much as you want it with this. Really, uh, what it is is that you know probably um, you might just scale it up a little bit. Ha yeah, scale it up. Yeah. Sure. Have you have you attempted to put the input in the output? I mean. It's the same frequency coming out, or close to it. Obviously, it's got some extras going on in there, but um, oh, yeah. so so have you attempted to loop it back? I mean, it's a it's a tedious thing. Have you tried it? I never. Okay. <laughs> I never tried it, it uh, but um, you know. I'm really tired. <laughs> uh, 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 well, I appreciate uh, the time you've given I'm us really so tired. far. This... Well, along this, Marco knows knows the story and knows, uh, you know. Yeah. And you, 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 of course, Russ, you have you have gone through a lot, and this takes a lot out of you. Uh, yeah, it, it's exhausting, especially after you do so many things. It, it can be very exhausting. I completely yeah, understand. It's, it's a nightmare, actually. Um, you think, you, you'd think when you come up here. with something amazing, people would be like, holy cow, let me add it. But that's sometimes not the attitude. So you got to work. Yeah. You got you to gotta have a big, you got to usually have a group of people with you to, to understand how to implement something sometimes. Definitely, you, definitely. Yeah, you can't Look, just throw it out this there. This is not an easy task. No. Um, and I have to work also. Yeah. And I fall in love with this technology, really. Uh, basically because of you guys, <laughs> really. Um, you, Daniel, you know, Marco, of course, the big reason why I'm doing this. Uh, so I've been striked by... And Randy, uh, pal. You know, yeah, Randy everyone. Randy, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's so many more people out there it. that you have even time to recognize. The, you, the list goes on and on. Yeah, the we're, list goes on and on. We're all in the same and boat. Jack, Jack from Hawaii. Jack Schultz, yeah. good old friend. Yeah. Uh, well, I missed here the voltage thing. Here we go. So when you retune this, you're only going to retune frequency. You're not going to replace any caps or anything like that. No, not really. This caps, this cap work works better. Works uh, really good. Yeah. So you took out your other your other cap bank. That was just for smoothing oh, it out, 
for the uh, DC uh, DC DC converter. Yeah, right? all of we went there. So right yes. now, so right now the light bulbs are actually going to be seeing AC according to the oscilloscope. See, yeah. yeah, okay. I see. Let me go just here for a clamp. I broke a wire. <laughs> That's better than breaking pipes. That's a mess. Yeah. You know, all weird things happened. So I've Many been stating from the beginning, life. my position is it's ready to go out the chute. It's ready to go out the door. That it's ready to go into production. Uh, so, here we go again. Uh, this. Or at, least, I, at least the basic model is here, and it's something to work with because a lot of people don't get this far. It's a challenge to get this far, to actually yeah. see something with the meters set up, and you're seeing something. And so, a verification for me personally would would set that off for me. Like that would be the verification. This is amazing. This is very interesting to me. But my personality is I want to do it with this, and then I know what I'm seeing because I did it. So this is this is the way to do it by sharing. So, sharing is caring. Yeah. Sharing is what? Sharing is caring. Maybe it really is. Else. Let's see. <laughs> see if you got here another frequency around. Uh. Do you know the? Do you remember the frequencies you've tuned this stuff at? Or do you yeah, have to find it? Probably seven hundred something. I don't so can you can you believe. briefly can you briefly um. I understand in, in normal terms why you're tuning it, but maybe in your own mind, can you tell us how and why you're tuning it? Well, it's obvious because um, um, it's now you're it's, low. It's obvious it's for you and different. me, but it's not obvious for a lot of other people. Uh, okay, so w when you when you got to circuit uh, and you're changing um, your load or um, Work, work, work being done uh, on on the output. What it does is that because it's, it's, it's a different load, you have a different frequency. It's like, um, let's say, uh, if you're using a Wi-Fi password in your house, uh, if you go to the bar, you have another frequency there uh, or another password there. So it's kind of the analogy for people that don't really are familiar yeah. with this. Uh, electrically it's minded. Really, if you change one, you change the other. Yeah, so the idea here is you've got an LC circuit set up, and an LC circuit's the basic principles of Tesla. It's, it's, it's his baby, really. And it's, it's the way I've seen, you know, it's resonance is what it is. And resonance, yeah. resonance in my mind is one of the, one of the ways to get to may have just be a part of, but it's one of the ways to get to this sort of uh, over unity, if you want to call it that, this amplifier. An amplifier is a good word. Tesla had the, uh, the Tesla amplifier. He didn't call it a Tesla over unity tower or something. It, is, it was an amplifier. It's amplifying the ambient around us. Yeah. It makes sense to me anyway. As I understand it now, I can always change my opinion. Yeah, of course. So let me see. I don't quite remember what was the frequency, but we are going through that in a second. Let's see. Let's see if you can. So it's right about 1.2. What uh, what uh, wattage and voltage are the light bulbs, and how are they connected? And how well, many they are, are connected there? in series and parallel? Okay. And parallel connection. And you, uh, just to have uh, your maximum output, uh, both amperage and voltage. Got it. So do you re you don't yeah. do you remember um, do you remember the inductance of the coils? I do have their. I do remember the resistance. It was probably 13, 13 ohms. Okay. Right about that. Okay, and I, I know you said this, but why, what size wire are you using there? Yeah, it's 0.56 mils. Okay. I don't know what the gauge is. Um, Fair enough. I, I think the section is uh, 0.5, um, uh, 0.56 millimeters, uh, right about that region. Fair enough. Yeah, so we're now hooked up to the output. 
So let me get to you this way over here. Okay. So we can do it again. Um, so 007, am I accurate in making the pronouncement that this is capable of eliminating nuclear fuel or petroleum fuel because this is a another new form of energy? I think it's not a new form. I think it's a rediscover of, um, you know, nothing is new in your work or in our work. I'm not saying in yours, uh, but you, you, I, Russ, and other people, we are, except Nikola Tesla, <laughs> he envisioned, he has really, uh, really a vision problems. <laughs> he saw machines in front of him, <laughs> you know, pretty clear. But we based our work in others, right? It's um, a piece here, a piece there. You can experience from that to there and there, and, you know, you put it together. But yes, uh, we already have a technology that can obsolete petroleum, which is solar, of course. And this is no different. This is a, re a renewable energy source. And it's amazing how easy it is. Um, luckily enough, I, you know, I'm not, well, I've become sort of uh, an electrical engineer. Um, but the way that I see it is, um, is that, you know, uh, is a renewable energy source. Now you can see now, uh, and Russ will identify this uh, really, 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 uh, you know, accurately, is that you have a phase shift. Now, despite the other situation, oh, let me go this. The phase shift is just an added bonus in this case, huh? Yeah, so you have here a phase shift between voltage and current, which is not good, but it's okay because you're using an inductive load and this is, uh, you know, the power factor will be compromised uh, by, the, um, by your phase shift. Phase shift is, is that the current of voltage is le leading or lagging, um, you know, it's arriving first or arriving uh, before um, one of or one another, right? Um, right. This is what you call, um, it's not a reactive load, <laughs> it's not that, but it produces a lot of reactive power, uh, which is the non-active part of your energy, um, because uh, uh, you have uh, two components, uh, which is uh, apparent power. Um, it, it, the other one is real power. And um, you have also the other component, which is reactive. Reactive is something that you um, will not use, only active power. But the way that you see this, let me go just, the way that you see this, it's, uh, and you, um, we know that current, uh, it's over time, right? If you're eating, let's say if you turn off, turn on your heat, um, only a few minutes before, uh, after you turn on the heater, you will become hotter. Uh, like, um, it's like, the, like this system. The way that, she, that I found that we can um, you, see if um, actually power is being done, it's with uh, with a thermal camera. I'm going to get to thermal here, but it's not working at, uh, you know, at, it's now working uh, at quite a, a while now, but uh, let me turn this off. Just let me get the camera. Yeah, when you get there, uh, talk about uh, some of the temperature gradients that you've seen. You, I know you've got an IR camera set up, which is which, which is another useful tool. You've got a lot of useful tools here, so this this is good. I I okay. I and then you can see on the on the PDF that I sent to Marco. Yes. Uh, the heat signatures um, because you know standard um, 
standard technology or standard, uh, you know, electrical engineer will tell you, okay, this is active, this is reactive, this is this, this is that. Now I wanted to see if, if there is heat, there is power. There right. Is, there's photon radiation. Yeah. Wastefulness most of the time. Can I interrupt for a second, yeah. please? Wastefulness most of the time. Am I allowed to grab a minute? I don't know minute? if you guys can see this, but I will make Absolutely. an attempt. 007, can I grab everyone's attention for a second? When I designed this coil, I designed it as a space power propulsion system. It's supposed to be creating uh, implosion at the top that compresses and then decompresses out the bottom. It's a one-way positive stomach flow that implodes and then explodes. It compresses and then decompresses. And I designed it as a, to go anywhere in the universe. It's hard to fully realize that that can be an engine for a spaceship, but that's what I designed it for. I can go anywhere in the universe and never have to return back to Earth for fuel. There's no payload yeah. for fuel. That is a true possibility here. <laughs> There is a true possibility here. All right, if you got that thing all tuned up, I guess uh, really quickly. Yeah. Before Let, let's fire it up. You want to fire it? Yeah, just show us the input output with the light bulbs connected. Oh, uh, let's I, do it. Okay. I think I think that verification, and after that, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair, okay. fair game for the moment. It looks, oh, it looks, okay, let's it looks, do it. It looks so good now visually. Now we got twenty-seven point three. Yeah. Then we go for the analogs. Now we are over an amp. Let me get this. Okay. I have to put my hand on here just to cover the blurry. No, I'm not having success. There, there you go. Okay. So we're at about one point. Uh, and the voltage. Five. Well, it must be coincidence. Coincidence with the with the digital meter. It's right about the 40, yeah, almost 40, which is the 37 around here. All right, right. we can see. Uh, it. We are now hooked up to the output, really. Um, let me see. That's the output. Your output now. Oh uh, yeah. So just yeah. Okay. One one point two five. Just over one point two five. Yeah, and that's your output in voltage. So here we're at about a hundred and hundred and ten or you so. Have, you have here. Yeah. Okay. So that was that was forty. Uh, if I remember right, about forty-six watts in, hundred and thirty-seven point five watts out. And and and, and yep. for me, verification with a meter like that and not the digital meter is better verification for me. I trust the analog value. Uh, you, yeah. Obviously, you need to check it with the oscilloscope to be to be 100% accurate. I there we go. Shouldn't say 100% because we're measuring we we're measuring a wave in a one-dimensional space here, two-dimensional space, which is wrong anyway. But it's the best yeah. tool. It's the best tools we have to uh, to measure what we conventionally understand. So this is your oscilloscope uh, readings. Got it. Uh, so it's one point one. At point one five, uh, the purple, right? Yeah, at about a hundred and twelve volts. It's about a hundred and twelve. Yeah, hundred and twenty-eight point okay. eight. And uh, that's watts. your waveform. Okay, so switch that thing to the input real quick, and then okay, and we can do whatever we need to. All right. Anyone else uh, got any input. questions? Let me know. Uh, what did you set the frequency for the uh, for the light bulbs? Uh, the frequency is now 1.226. All right. If you go Killers. down, of course, um, that's what happens. I'm going down. Can you see the lights over there? Yes. Yep. So we've gone out of resonance, right? Now yes. we have uh, out sure. of resonance to one, one kilohertz, roughly. And sure. here we go again. Before you bring it back in, or, or, or why don't you um, show us the scope while you go in and out of resonance, just so people can right. see you know, what we're actually looking at here. 
So there you can see the voltage and current dropping down. Re resonance is very important, especially in this, especially here. You can, you can actually see tuning that frequency in is key, which is what Daniel Nuez was doing for a long time, and not too many people really went at it. But this is, this is the basic principles he was doing as well. And, and yes? Yeah, about threefold, I think. Three, three to four, but okay, go on. Yeah. The potential here, according to what, we're, what I am visually seeing, without touching and feeling and actually you know, doing it by myself, <clears throat> that is a correct statement. We are seeing a device that is putting, that has a, a, a one, one input and a three to, th to four higher percentage output. Yeah, so th according to these meters, which th th there's no reason to not believe these meters. He's got digital, he's got analog, he's got the oscilloscope. Those are the three main components that any really good scientist, engineer, is, it needs to verify something like this. There's always questions and concerns, but you're seeing what I'm seeing, and I'm seeing something very Extraordinaire, very interesting, something worth looking into. Yeah, I mean, you can, if you can, uh, I mean, if you can run a light bulb and in, in a, a, an inductive load, or, or in this case, a resistive load, that is true power. Most of the time, that's true power. You can't necessarily fake true power with that type of load. With the no. <laughs> With the DC-DC converter and the other converter and the battery, it gets more complicated and confusing, but this is just a signal in, a voltage in, a current in, a voltage, current, and signal out, and an actual real-world load. You can't get any more basic than this. I, I don't see, yeah. there's no exotic materials here. You could, no. you could potentially do this on your own with no machinery if you know how to make copper wire, make the dyes. I mean, in theory, you could build this whole thing with just stuff that you could find around, which which is not an easy task. Most exotic materials and high-level scientists are doing things with exotic materials, and it's like, how am I supposed to get that? You, you can't. You can't. I mean, you can't get that. So that's why this is fundamentally important, in my viewpoint. Yeah, I can show you some exotic materials. And yeah. And like your question to be this mic. Any questions? Please, please come up and take the chair if you have yeah. a question. Take the chair. <laughs> And I'll throw okay, the switch. OK, Russ, I was a little bit concerned about Ru you know. Russ, you, you, you have been around. Hold, hold, on, hold on, 007. Hold on a second. We got a question. OK, OK, OK. We got a question. You, you have been around. You, you, you've seen a lot. Have you seen this? Is this significant? Have you seen it before? Or is, is this just a, a, a one in, four out? It means that it's there, but. That's a that's a good question. Uh, let me let me Mike trade you back. So that's a good question, and what I can tell you is is I've seen a lot of people claim stuff like this. I've I've spent my entire research, eight last years, doing nothing but watching a YouTube video such as this, and then attempting to build it for myself and ver and verify it. And to be totally honest, I haven't had any good luck with most things I've done. There's a few things that are intriguing and I want to continue, but I haven't really got to this success level. But I can tell you uh, that da when Daniel Nunez was doing this principle, he was showing these things with the things he had available. He didn't have an oscilloscope at the time. He had some, some meters, and, and they were just digital. He didn't even have analog stuff. And I had a hard time believing that because meters can lie to you. I've learned the hard way meters can lie to you. You have to really know what you're doing to get this good accurate measurement. That doesn't mean you can't build a coil and make it work. I'm just saying to take the measurements. You have to have a, you have to have a lot. So to answer your question, um, th this is, for me personally, this is something that you guys should really pay attention to and you should look at. And if, if you see me post a video of the same results, you better start paying attention because this is significant. I cannot guarantee a time. I have five children. Six is the oldest. Don't push me. <laughs> Don't push my wife. Kind of a follow-on then. Theoretically, 
someone could build this and basically get a three, three and a half, four fold output from the input and or stated another way, basically reduce their electrical bill by two thirds, three fold, something like that. Assuming they could build one, scale it, and make it work, and hook everything up correctly and all that. Yep. Or create some an indute or maybe a commercial application where they made something that would connect to houses and therefore reduce the power load on the grid and yeah, I mean, I mean, for me personally, the ultimate thing was just make this device function, uh -huh. even if I had to run it from a battery or something like that, because uh, yeah. I can always take a solar cell and run the battery. So I, I, I personally, oh, okay. so I then personally then tend you, to Then you got away. more or less free energy at that I, point. I personally tend to stay away from any grid input at all if I can avoid it. Okay. Now, what I, what I will tell you is that, and I asked, I asked 007 here, I said, did you loop this thing? That's the, that's the ultimate. And to be totally honest, uh, which I always am, I don't know if you can even loop a device because of how it functions. There may always need to be energy conservation through the whole system, but, it's, but when you actually close the loop, if it's a proper device, you would think it would work. But the way we don't understand this universe, mm -hmm. I have a feeling that might not be the best way to go about it. It may be better to take an, a conventional energy, run it through an amplifier, and conventionally use it. Mm -hmm. A hundred years from now, maybe we don't need conventional electricity, and I can just charge my mind with like you know radiant energy. You know? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Forget the coffee; I don't need it. But I mean, so in my viewpoint, um, to answer your question, um, yeah, that's the basic principle here: is to down your energy bill, whatever you need to do. In this case, I personally would just go straight to buying some cheap solar panels and make this thing work. You know, mm -hmm. what what most people don't understand that. I'm learning is when you can live really basic. Yeah. Well, can't you grow your own food? What do you really need your cell phone for? Get, you can run some candles if you want. I mean, if you go back that basic. Yeah. yeah. So if you wanted to your cell phone, you create some simple devices. You live basic. You're good to go. You know, if you want to live in the lifestyle you do now, you have to build a lot of these possibly, or mm. ampl make it bigger. Whatever the case may may need to be. But yeah, that's the ultimate goal. Is, is, to, is to produce energy and not have to be concerned about anyone else around you or the big guy on top of you or whatever the right. case may be. Yeah. And if you're looping it, then basically you're saying that it becomes self-sustaining at that point. That's right. And I've, I've just had experience with you know, playing around with the idea of looping because um, I actually have two of these coils sitting on my desk. They've been there longer than they need to be. Uh -huh. You know, and, and so looping this is something that I could try, but I just know that from, from the people I work with, the people I've talked to, the, the thing about it is, is it's a very difficult task, and I just think that has the way... Can I jump in? Oh, the loop, you mean. The way the energy well, thing Let's just get it works. working yeah. first, and then... But the amplification part. Well, can I, can I say something? Yes. Sure. Okay. Um, I think I have, uh, you know, I have experienced it before, um, I think it's possible to loop it, really. I think it's possible to loop it. Um, but you have to have the right equipment to do it. Um, because um, it goes back to the principle where this DC to DC converters uh, operate on. It's like LEDs. Between the anode and cathode, you don't have a single physical connection. Right? right. Uh, that's that's how this um, DC high voltage DC DC con the, uh, converters are built. They're just connected by a single diode, or you know, minimum uh, interference between your uh, input and l looping. Let's say if we go right here to um, an inverter, let's say a 12 volt inverter, um, 800 watts, right. whatever. Right, right, straight uh, to an inverter, yeah. You just have to uh, make it uh, properly but that one system doesn't interfere with another. Minimal, minimal interference, yeah. really. And that makes Min sense. I think, I think we've got like less than 10 minutes. We've got about three people wanting to ask questions. So. I guess uh, before I let the questions go on, I have to ask you one more question. We, okay. we don't have a schematic. Uh, just briefly tell me the coils. We know that uh, they're short. Um, six of them are shorted out of one bundle, uh, but are the other ones run in uh, parallel, or are they uh, series? 
In series, okay. In series, right, in cool. order to for for us to have uh, high voltage uh, on the output, you must series. You okay. must, you know, I I each series uh, series connection will give you a ratio in voltage. And if you go, uh, as you know, Russ, if if you go up on voltage, uh, the current must be accordant. That, that's uh, right. Yeah. To that, so that's. Um, Ohm's law, right? And that, yeah, <laughs> and that's uh, that's L1, L2, both connected identically, right? Yeah. Okay. But the the thing here is that this is different from a normal transformer, is that on a regular transformer you don't have the L1 and an L2 connected to your power source. Right. You don't have it. Okay. You, they work by induction, so L2. It's uh, induct induction. It's yeah. harvesting energy from your ferrite core or from your iron core. Right, exactly. Uh, or, or the right. change the change in magnetic field, really. Yeah, right. So here, this there is no losses because of that. Yeah, because it's because your it's input, an air. Right, it's, it's your your output. You and you you conserving. Um, demagnetic field because that's what important it's your current do not lost your current because voltage you can step it up <laughs> you know uh, a boost converter can do that uh, on a dc ratio um, or also in, in, in a transformer ac uh, the current um, but when you conserve um, your um, this this input source and um, channel it into your uh, output source it's totally different it's totally different right yeah uh, it, it, yeah because induction by defini definition is losses right that's if right. you induct usually in that's why everything that's why everything, that's why everything yeah. gets hot it's 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 that principle okay all right we're gonna i want to take a few more questions i think that's good okay. okay speaking of temperature which you just were referring to okay we've seen with other well, historically, other devices like Floyd Suite reported a drop in temperature when he went under over unity load. Can we track that? It seems like you have the instrumentation to do that. So yeah, so on that. so double L seven. Um, I don't recall from the PDF, but I know it's in there. Um, you saw a an actual negative drop in in temperature in the center of the torus. Is that a correct statement? Yes. Okay, and, that, and that's that, from, that's it. yeah. and so the longer it's on, the, the lower the temperature gets, obviously, to a point, right? Well, obvious, obvious, and you can automatically, you know, refer that to anything uh, from a tornado, uh, from your water going down the drain. Uh, so it's a lower pressure, right? Right. Uh, if you're spinning something on a toroid uh, fashion, um, let's take for instance the measurement of uh, the PSI pressure on a on a on a tornado. At the very center, there is a significant drop of pressure. Right. Right. So if if there is a drop of pressure, there is a drop of temperature. Right. That's correct. So, um, and and for most people who don't know, that's a lot of people dealing with Tesla stuff. They they see that they, they call it cold electricity, but it's li yeah. it's literally like it's a colder environment because of that. There's lots of technologies that have that. Okay, uh, and by yeah. the way, we're good. We, I think we got one more question. But by the way, the the PDF that I'm talking about that we're talking about is on Marco. Uh, it's on your YouTube channel. So, I'll we'll try to I'll let you tell them your YouTube channel. But it's out there. One more. Uh, yeah. I have a question for 007 and I have a question for Marco. Uh, but I would mention I've run scalar signals through uh, these wire coils and uh, appear to be creating singularities and it is endothermic. So I agree with what 007 is saying about that. Um, so 007, simple question, what's the gap space on the coil? The gap space? Yeah, between the wire twists. Oh, uh, wait a second, I will tell you that. <laughs> Let me get to ruler here. Good question. No gap space, no results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also uh, give us just the general dimensions of the coil there, just so we have them since you got the ruler uh, out. I will do that. Uh, wait a second. While he's mentioning, Marco, you also mentioned that these wire coils are essentially like toys compared to other 
materials and methods you've used. Can you talk a little bit about what materials and construction techniques of other coils? The gap space is everything. Um, gap space I have a is video that BJ has done for me. Nine. Gap space is 0 0.9 inches. What is that? You uh, uh, metric uh, millimeter. system. Millimeters. Millimeters. It a bit later. Uh, yeah. 0.9. Then, then 0 0.9 the, centimeters? Then. You're talking about uh, centimeters? Millimeter. Millimeters. 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 0.9 uh, millimeters? It's got to yeah. be centimeters. It's got to be 0 0.9 millimeters. So it's roughly almost 10 millimeters. So okay. it's 0 0.9. 0 0.9 centimeters. That's okay. in centimeters, yes. So I can go here for the conversion table. Uh, uh, in That's all right. We got it. Meters. The, there's a gap space. The gap space is always in the center. But there's also what is called a boundary condition or a shear on the outskirts. It's so too complex for you to understand how it's being created. The coil is seven centimeters uh, wide. Uh, so, uh, oh, right, sorry. <laughs> it's uh, 20, uh, 27, uh, yeah, centimeters, yeah, 27. And on the center, we have nine centimeters on the hole here. Okay, well, I think we lost your video, but we got it. We're good. Is the, gap, is the gap space, Marco, related to the degree of the coil twist? No, in fact, I don't incorporate that twist in the accurate design. This is this is a variance. This design. Yeah, There's, go ahead. You've got you've got. Uh, so according to, if you want to talk about math directly only, you would have a single gap space with the two copper conductors right next to each other. But then you'd also have twelve of these uh, holders that you're seeing the black things holding the wire in place. But you use. In this case, it's easier to use 11 just because of the way the wire wraps the torus. Right. But to do a, an actual pure representation of math alone, which I've done myself, um, but not in this configuration, is it makes it more challenging. So it's like if it works and you can make it easier, do it. This is sort of that. So this could potentially be 1% of what you could get when you do it mm. to the T. Gotcha. Just what's follow your, the math. What's your first name? Ken. Hi, Ken. Okay, um, can I take the floor for a second? Absolutely, I think we're... Ken, stay put, though. Do you want to you wanna let him go? You want to leave him on? Huh? Are we good? I want to leave him on. Okay. Can you hear me, 007? What? I'm saying hi. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, first of all, it's what time a.m. where you're at? It's not that late, but it's pretty late. What time is it there? Um, well, I'm glad you're not almost sure. Almost midnight. Okay, thank your wife and your family and your cat and everyone else for <laughs> letting us run you into the ground every day. <laughs> well, thank you for having me and to, to have uh, the opportunity um, to show this to you, and um, was a big, 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 big pleasure to uh, talk with Mr. Grease <laughs> at last. <laughs> the same right yeah. back at you. It's always fun. I, I, I enjoy this type of stuff. This is what I do on a daily basis through the interwebs of live open science. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Not a lot of fun when we burn a thousand dollars of equipment or a thousand years, <laughs> or either if you burn a oscilloscope, ten thousand. <laughs> I agree well, on that. <laughs> it's not funny. You've seen it. I have to change, you know, but things, everything went bad. <laughs> but it's what it is. It's live. I'm going to subjugate, I'm going to make myself last. So I'm going to still let you all speak and take the lead. So 007, if you were making this out of exotic materials, if you were making it uh, uh, out of carbon or some other bizarre thing like magnesium, or if you were trying to make it um, chemically. Can I, can I just show you something? 
Please do. That, 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 I, that, take that take it up. A, take it up a thousand uh, notches. <laughs> that I that I found here very interesting. Um, speaking about exotic materials, let me see if I can get this working for you guys. Wait a second. He uh, always has a dessert at the end. And show you something really, 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 really significant. You better add it, sugar to that. <laughs> I run off sugar. Shh, don't tell You're that. off sugar? I, I, I run off sugar. You run off sugar? We have. Um, I got my question. We we also we know that uh, Ohm's law. Yeah. Um, if we uh, increase the temperature on a conductor. We lost your video. Bring it back. Uh, okay. Got it. Um, if you if you have temperature um, rising on the conductor a uh, conductor, um, Russ and I want you to ask this question: What's going to happen to the resistance? when temperature goes up. It's going to get uh, more resistance. So resistance will go up. We right? lost your video again. Why, why is this video is turning off all the time? Because it's Skype. Sorry, Skype. <laughs> I love you. Just kidding. I thought it, thought it was my camera. Um, let me get to this. Wait, wait a second. So he said with increasement, increase in temperature or entropy, you have heat, which is collisions, which is re reluctance, which is friction, which is movement. It's, it's, it's the whole principle why a superconductor works. It has to, doesn't have to. Most of the time they're at cold, cold temperature because of the Bose-Einstein condensate, which in this case is the opposite when you go high temperature. So th that's why whenever things get hot and you're working with electrical systems, the, the, the efficiency goes down. You got to check your efficiency when the system's hot. That way you know really where you're at too. Sometimes if your system gets hot, hopefully it gets cold. So those seven, what are you showing us? Um, wait a second. Let me set this camera here for you guys to have a perspective. Well. On this, our pal, you've whetted our appetite. What kind of materials? What's it going to be made out that you're showing us? What's the compound or the? What are you about to show us? Give us a verbal explanation in advance. This is graphene. I was going to guess paralytic carbon, so I was pretty close in my mind. Yeah, that's it. It has a layer um, here. It has multiple layers. You can see it's a, it's a kind of a paralytic um, graphite or, well, it must be graphene at this point, of course. Structured, and I'm structured gonna show carbon. you the resistance on this. Yeah, well, you just said it in a completely different way, so you don't have to worry about looping it then. So, you think, I'm gonna hold it steady over here. Move your, move your meter back down just a little. Wait. Wait, let, let me get this here. This is all part of live open I science. I got to increase the angle in order Patience. to go and show you this. You know who we should have thanked to, even though we forgot him because he's been low profile, we should thank Jamie, too. Absolutely. I bring, I bring his name up when I speak about Vortex Math because he's, he's a pioneer. Yeah. So I'm sure that you can see it now. Right? It's yes. right about 1.6. We, we can see it. Now heat it up. Okay. I'm going to see it go down. <laughs> yeah, I can see the light below. So. Wait. Let me Maybe increase it on temperature. So you know our next commission is to make a spaceship. Wait a second. This wait. Uh, I was gonna say, Shit. You might have to try heating it on the on the side or something. Some weird structured lattice thing. It's, crystals are great. Ah. It's hot. This is why live open science is fun. See, don't laugh. Uh, okay, laugh. That's the best part of this. Okay, I'm gonna start. There it goes. So what'd you do? Flip it over? 
No, I just increased the surface of of the heating. Okay. That's that's uh, completely not the way you would think of a normal heating problem. So we we know I know anyway. Graphene and graphite <laughs> and paralytic carbon—they're all very <laughs> interesting interesting property. It's just what I work on at work is 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 quasi crystal based principles and it's it's this type of principle it's very interesting exotic stuff uh, uh, paralytic carbon and graphene I mean carbon is the most basic thing around you just have to know how to turn it into graphene and it, it's pretty incredible so you've seen it hey guys we're running out of time here <laughs> okay hey Russ yes. I got your nickname and Dr. Strangela <laughs> Oh, I'd rather I'd rather just sign my name, Mr. Open and Source. And it works better when you 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 going and and do uh, electricity and uh, you know uh, going in you know hey transmitting um, electricity through it. When you go to high amperage, it, 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 it drops on resistance heavily. I mean, it's the opposite of copper. Say it one more time. Say it loudly, and then we're going to say goodbye. I want th that deserves saying twice. Say it again, please. And what is causing it at, to do the reverse and opposite of science and physics textbook knowledge today? You're saying what again? And what is the, why does this happen? Is it going through the circuit or what? Well, if we build our circuit with this uh, material, with uh, the coil with this material, um, you know what will happen, right? You, you will, you know, put two, I don't know, 20 amps, 30 amps, 100 amps, 200 amps on this, and the efficiency will go up dramatically. And ultimately, what you know, graphene does um, because it's a honeycomb structure. You've seen it. You can Google it or something. Four minutes. Goes back to your map, really. If you map it and if you see the carbon, are they enough? The carbon is six. And if you go to the periodic table, um, lithium I think is three. Carbon is six. And nine is four. <laughs> so people would become their own power plant utility. That's what you're saying. If you build the coil with these three materials, I wonder what happened. No input. <laughs> no input. No input, yeah. At one point, you will disconnect your input. Um, but you still have to have, um, for this to happen, for this effects that you've seen, it must have, it must has an input. Yeah, eventually it will be a closed system, because my math says that it's a closed system. Yeah, so. it could be, it could be. Um, but there is a very nice machine that can build nanostructures in Germany. Uh, I've seen one. Um, okay, you have the closing, you have the closing remarks. I'm not, I'm done, Russ is done. I've had a pleasure. Thank you both and everyone else here. Okay. So I think I think we're good. I'm good. I appreciate it. Uh, this is this is a little snippet for you guys that's never seen this live open science reaction. This is great. This is a perfect demonstration for you to see this. So it was a pleasure that I got to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, guys. Marco? Did you have some closing remarks? You said you had, you wanted to wrap it up? Um, well, if and who ever comes back, I will go into the ad infinitum tedium of explaining why the base 10 system is not one system, it's two separate systems. The separating of the 124875 them from the flux field of the 396. And once you separate them, you can do any calculation in the universe. You, have, you get rid of endless non-repeating decimals, irrational numbers, pi is a whole number. Uh, essentially, my, my video is called putting the whole back into the whole. The, the whole is spelled H-O-L-E, and the whole is spelled W-H-O-L-E.
Because as things accelerate, as they spin, they create a vortex, oh, a funnel through the center. It's called a tor, T-O-R-E. That's why it's called a torus or a tornado. That's why our body's called the human torso, because everything has to keep moving. If it stops moving, it shuts down. And nothing goes through the hole. It defines the hole as because it creates an aperture, a lip. If nothing can go through the hole because all mass processes and warps. And I found that there's an energy that's causing everything to move forward, that's causing it to literally have a predetermined pathway into the future. So my work in this in computer science with the director of advanced, of advanced operating systems from Microsoft has applied it to, he says it's the most coherent, the most regularity. Essentially, I found mathematical perfection, and it shows that there is an energy coming out of the center of mass of everything that's irresistible. It causes everything to have a predictable pathway into the future, and thus, you can get rid of friction, you can get rid of resistance and electricity because you are coupling, you are harmonically in sync with this energy. And it's only magnetism can respond quick enough and fast enough to have free play to this energy. And so thus, the saying is, he who controls magnetism controls the universe. Because I know how to use magnetism properly in relationship to this emanation, which you can call spirit, I'm able to get super efficiency in electricity, and thus it makes mankind the curators or the custodians of the universe. That doesn't mean we're the only ones, but it means that the whole entire universe is our playground. I hope we first clean up our lakes and streams and rivers and oceans before we go anywhere else, though. Well, there you have it, folks. It is truly a breakthrough energy and vortex-based mathematics is the mathematics of that energy. Thank you very much, Marco Rodin. Thank you very much, Russ Grease and 007. Thank you for all your time.